everybody i had to jump on here really quick to record this next video because the lighting is failing me right now if i drop into shadows i sincerely apologize i was not expecting the sun to try to disappear behind these trees right before i'm trying to record but this video is going to be about imposter syndrome and what it is first of all and how to overcome that especially as a college student or professional or a person entering in any sort of space that is unfamiliar to them from like an inner city environment or an environment where you're just not used to being exposed to a lot of things that you're now starting to get exposed to I don't know if I'm making a lot of sense right now a lot of like a lot of the things that I'm going to try to cover will become clearer as I go through the video and I'll mostly highlight my experiences with imposter syndrome in college so this will definitely be a more college and career focused video I can only really speak from my experiences and how I basically dealt with it and overcame it on my own imposter syndrome according to just a quick google search is the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as the result of one's own efforts or skills so I have that written down, I just read it to you all, and there's actually another definition that was posted on an article by Psychology Today, and it says that it's a psychological term referring to a pattern or behavior where people doubt their accomplishments and have a persistent, often internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. Okay? This is integral to a lot of experiences that many 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 people face when it comes to taking this another step in their life not only is it a part of growing up so now you're a new adult you've never been an adult before you're in your early 20s and you've started to make all these decisions regarding your life but you're just not sure that you're qualified for because your parents always made these decisions so take this sort of growing pain or coming of age part of your life and combine it with maybe the fact that you're black Combine it with maybe the fact that you're from a lower income class or lower income community. Combine this with maybe the fact that you're a woman. Combine this maybe with the fact that you're queer. And you can clearly see how so many of these issues when it comes to confidence, when it comes to really believing in your own abilities can really stack up. Specifically, my imposter syndrome stems from my intersecting identity. So, it's a, it stems from me being black, it stems from me being a woman, and I can't say it's really because of those parts of me, but it's because of the things that I've been exposed to due to my race, due to my sex, due to the community that I've been a part of. These are the things that I've been exposed to that kind of paint my worldview so much different than the space I'm trying to enter and occupy. I entered college as a management information systems major that is basically a computer science but not really it's more so a business degree that's centered around how businesses utilize their systems technologies and different informational resources to make decisions and with this degree it's closely aligned with computer science so you do learn to code you learn a lot of more so surface level functions when it comes to systems and engineering and those sorts of things. This is a STEM major and within STEM it's widely known that there's been an effort or a struggle to get a lot of minorities in that field. So both women, whether you're black, women, etc. So sometimes even when I'm in my classes, I would be the only black woman there. Another thing about this being a business degree, not even just it being a STEM field, but by it also being a business field, there has there was just this sort of innate feeling of my mind is not wired the way that my classmates are wired. And you might be thinking, okay, if you're not business savvy, why would you go into business? And I chose to major in a business field because I wanted to definitely focus more on, so on the economic side of things, really figure out how humans come together to make money and to process money. I really wanted to understand how money worked. And I didn't major in economics because I just felt that business was more so the actual implementation of a lot of these practices and principles that would lead towards in a, a revenue stream or income stream or whichever. So by me growing up in a lower income environment, I thought one of the most important things for me to do was to become 
money smart or to learn how to manage money. I'm actually very artistically minded and artistically focused, but I figured for a found, from a foundational perspective, go into business and then learn exactly how you can make a sustainable life or a sustainable way of living and then you can move on to other things, right? So all that aside, I was, you know, surrounded by people who knew for a fact that they wanted to go off to work for Allstate, go off to work for Microsoft, Google, all these different big time corporations that to me was very intimidating in terms of their co corporate requirements for to be an employee. So I'm just thinking to myself like, wow, I definitely did not have a lot of exposure to a lot of the jargon that a lot of my classmates were using when it comes to business. I did not know anything about accounting or finance and these sorts of terms were used so often throughout my academic career that it made me feel like I was dumb. It really made me feel like I really wouldn't know what I was talking about if I walked into a room and people were just in there just talking business. And I'm like, well, what are you doing in this major? How are you here? And it's like, well, I'm here to learn. So that kind of bolstered my intent to stay within business. I also have more on my list of what caused my imposter syndrome. So another thing was a lack of representation. I didn't have a lot of role models growing up that lived the sort of life that I may have thought I wanted to live. So I didn't think I had, I wasn't exposed to all the possible options that I may be able to become. And another reason I put that led to my imposter syndrome was, was just my class background. So since I come from a lower class household or a lower income household, I didn't have a very positive opinion of, on a lot of like corporate conglomerates and capitalism and the way that um, social structures are geared around America's model of business and economics. I was the demographic that bore the brunt of a lot of discrimination and a lot of practices that really led to a very, very harsh and difficult upbringing. And so also when I thought of corporate America, I would think of, okay, well, my hair is not the right type for corporate America. My, my like, when I code switch, that's not proper for corporate America. Like, I can't walk in there just talking like this. I can't, I can't keep my Chicago accent. I got to talk a different type of way. It just made me feel like I couldn't be myself. And so many of these businesses, they want diversity. But a lot of times when you do hire a minority or a person that's from an underrepresented background, they assimilate. So you're, you're, you're hiring people and you're saying that, oh, we want a new perspective. We want people to give new ideas from their experiences, but they change who they are just to fit this whole white, middle, upper class, um, heterosexual, just this whole dominant background of what business is. So that led to some of my imposter syndrome and anxieties. I also had no support network. So I was first generation college. Neither of my parents had been to college before I went to college. Um, I didn't have much support throughout my academic career. So I went to orientation by myself. I looked up things about my college by myself. I established where I would live off campus by myself. And it's just it's just this isolating experience where you don't have people backing you up. Like, oh yeah, you know, my niece is going to become an executive. Oh, my niece is going to become this. She's getting her degree. She's going to go on to do these great things. And so the only person you really have to give you that sort of support and praise is really yourself unless you don't see it. I had a negative worldview. I didn't think that people genuinely wanted to help me. I didn't think that people genuinely cared about my success. I didn't think there was much positivity to be found in any sort of environment, whether it's my work environment, whether it's my school environment. I thought that, you know, oh, I'm in school. These professors don't really want to help me. They just want to do their job so they can get paid and pay their bills. I didn't think that in corporate America, if I were to get a job, it would be this, oh my God, exciting and rewarding and fulfilling thing that you just see in a lot of these uh, in a lot of these career help videos I just thought people go and they get a job to work to pay the bills growing up you're you're not taught oh to be this thing because this is just a, a purpose beyond yourself you're taught you need to go work a nine to five 
go work paycheck to paycheck and use that paycheck to pay your bills and that's just what your future as an adult is going to be like so I didn't have a very positive outlook on success and the last thing was I had a genuinely lack a, I had a genuine lack of self-esteem and confidence so aside from all the external factors that affected the way that I felt about my career and the way that I felt about my education inside of myself I had been trotted down and beaten down not just by myself but like by other factors in my life to the point where I had very low confidence and low self-esteem but the good news is I am definitely segueing out of that point in my life I can say with full certainty and I'm honestly becoming way more comfortable with where I am right now rather than where I feel like I should be so I'm going to go and touch briefly on 10 touch briefly on 10 ways that you can fight imposter syndrome and take back control of your own confidence. Here's how I'm getting over it. Number one, find a space. By this I mean I was intimidated, right, about all those people wanting to work for Allstate, all those people looking at Hilton and Microsoft and Google and all these really big just amazing but very white dominated um, corporate environments or just an environments where I really felt like I would have to assimilate. I only grew up around people who looked like me. Um, diversity is good for everyone by the way so I'm not sitting here saying oh avoid different experiences or to put yourself outside of your comfort zone just for the sake of that but I'm saying while you're still shaky on your feet, while you're still trying to establish who you are and what you want to be, uh, I thought the most important thing for me to do is to not do my best to not unconsciously assimilate. I wanted to maintain my cultural integrity first and foremost. I wanted to always remain who I was. I didn't want to shed the part of me that was definitely the girl from Southside Chicago. Like I didn't want to let that go. So what I did was I looked for internship opportunities or spaces where I can be educated that was embroiled in my natural life experiences so there are companies that are centered in Chicago that are um, that are black owned so I would look into natural hair care companies I would look into um, the BET network their office based here I would look into different organizations and foundations that place black or non-represented students in certain internships just even if I go to them and begin working at these larger corporations I would be inundated with this this concept of self-empowerment and this self-affirmation where I would go through people who understood that the kids that they're going to act, take to access these opportunities will come from a background where they would just need that, that extra push and that extra encouragement. Number two is emphasize what you're good at and leverage your perspective. So I said before how I had all these anxieties about man I don't really look like the people here I don't really sound like the people here I don't think like the people here these people think about things that I can't really comprehend because I'm from the type of environment where I'm just exposed to so many different like so much less I met people recently who left the country and traveled the world I just thought you know I was born in Chicago I would go to school in Chicago I would work in Chicago and that was just how my perspective on where I would be was because I just didn't have that exposure. You have your own perspective. Do not let people tell you that where you're from or where your background does not have value. Because people always tell me like, oh, you don't sound like you're from um, the, this part of Chicago. You don't sound like you grew up in a certain way. Like, And it just made me feel like, wow, if people find out I'm from here, then they'll think less of my capabilities. Or they'll just, it's just always this very... Aside from it being super prejudiced, uh, it just really kind of drove home the fact that people make judgments about where you're from and you know how you may have been in that type of environment that changed how you felt. But think about it. Nobody look look at yourself and look at the people that are in this in this company or in this school and they don't look like you and they don't sound like you and they don't act like you. That sets you apart and that's a good thing. You have something to bring to the table that they can't. You have experiences that they do not have that you can bring to the table. Just like you look at their experiences and it's like, it could be five Nancy's in a room, but it can be only one Janelle, right? But the world would be so much better if people had diverse input wherever they go. So keep your authenticity 
and leverage that to the best way that you can. Number three is embrace the discomfort, do it anyway. Imposter syndrome is tied directly to anxiety and when you take risks throughout your life that feeling is not going to go away. It's you're going to keep being nervous about the decisions that you make. You're always going to wonder if you're going in the right direction or doing the right thing. And I'm here to tell you right now to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. You may hear that phrase a few times and when I first heard it I was just like ugh. Oh my god, this is gonna I'm gonna have to keep being uncomfortable forever. Yes. The more you push yourself beyond your comfort zone and you find that whether you fail or whether you succeed, you will always learn and you will always be able to just test it out and experiment and be like, okay, this worked last time, I'm gonna do that again. This didn't work this time, I'm gonna do this again. And the more and more you do it, you're able to tell people that you've done it and you know that you're not making it up. By this I'm basically just saying. I said that I was learning to code in class for my management information systems major. At the close of the second semester that I had, I worked with a team and we built a budgeting app through a competition on our own and we won the competition. And this just fueled my confidence to a T because at the very start of this competition it was a hackathon so we had to stay up for 24 full hours to build the app. I was nervous, I was so scared, and I said I don't know what I can really contribute or bring to my team because I'm not sure if I know really much of anything to really help build this app. But like halfway through the night, I was just, oh yeah, we need to connect this object to this method, and I was just in there just like working with the database and creating the different transactions that we'll have to use for the budgeting app, helping them connect the different graphs and charts that they would need to populate data fields. And I did it all on my, well not all on my own because I was on a team. But I was able to do it and to me it was just part of the work like I was just like oh yeah I don't know how to do this I'm gonna go google it real quick the things I didn't know I just googled so at the end of the day like I don't know where my anxiety came from but I'll move on so do things put yourself out there number four is learn if so much of fear is ignorance and this applies to so many different things so much of the fear that you feel inside is literally because you don't know that much if you are sitting here and you're like wow well, i want to be a graphic designer but i don't know a thing about graphic design of course you're going to be nervous jumping into a full-on graphic design project for a client and you don't know a thing about it but if you learn and you practice your knowledge and then go into it um this doesn't necessarily like this can tie back to the one about you know be nervous and do it anyway but even just book smarts, even just learning through your own resources, that would help. Like that would help build up your sense of your self capabilities. Number five is trust the process. So I said that a lot of the imposter syndrome feelings you may have is stemming from you know being in education or academia or going on into your career. The reason I say trust the process is because you're in school. It's your probably your first job. You're there to learn. People know that you don't know everything. So in all honesty, it's less about what you can do and what you know. And it's more about your passion, your fervor, your work ethic. What steps have you taken to get where you want to be? How do you strategize solving these problems for yourself? Um, I'm a junior now. I am way more confident in my marketing and business knowledge than I was when I was a sophomore freshman because I've gone through more classes and I've taken accounting and so I know those business jar terms and jargon that they used to stress me out so much in my earlier classes. There we go. Trust the process. <laughs> Number six is stop comparing yourself to others. I know that sounds really hard but and honestly that's not even a really good tip because I can still compare myself to others but it's more so in a way where it's like we have these things in common this person was able to do this I should be able to do this too so when I say don't compare yourself to others it's take into account the things you have in common first don't look at this person has this and I don't and this person has gotten here and I haven't because you're going to wear yourself down a lot of people say that the only person they're in competition with is who they were yesterday. So I think that mindset is really important in maintaining focus on yourself. And I think that you will find if you, you will go way further and you will be very much happier with where you are if you think back to how, how you were a year and a half ago or two years ago and how you wanted to be where you were in the position that you are today. And if not, it's time to get to work. Let's go. <laughs>
Number seven is develop a portfolio. Have things to show. That's pretty much what I mean by that. When you were in, if you're in art or design, then a portfolio is basically a, a like what's it called? That word where you put all the things together, an amalgamation of the best work that you've ever done. And you put it all together, and people can just see the proof right there. So have proof. If you have anxieties about your capabilities, what you're able to do, what you're not able to do, um, over time these feelings still follow you even when you're accomplishing things. So keep proof. Always be out there building your best self and the more and more you build, the more you gain confidence because you took a step forward and you're going to keep taking, step, taking steps forward. Number eight is get a support network. Get people to surround you who really believe in you, who are excited about what you're, where you're headed in life, and who are keeping track of where you are and what you want to do. Now, this also means that you should definitely be the type of person who is also interested in where people are in life. People definitely need support, and what you put out into the world, you will receive. I don't particularly like when people do nice things with the just only with the expectation of reciprocation. However, it would be so great to have a very mutual relationship with others where you're just all supportive of one another and you they believe in you. Uh, one of the closest friends that I have, his name is William, he pushes me every day to finish my homework, stay focused, do the best that I can do. And if I ever express feelings of uncertainty or lack of confidence, he just, he just, he will treat it like it's like, or oh, what? What's wrong with you? Why do you think you can't do this? Like, it's just, and I will feel like, wow, I'm being ridiculous. What makes me think I can't do this? Like, I, I take on that energy. So you really want that type of energy in your life. Don't really entertain the company of others who aren't interested in where you're going to be or who don't really take the time to support you or encourage you in the way that you need psychologically to help you. You honestly have to be your best hype man. You really do. At the end of the day, you got you, so you have to be find that confidence within yourself that you can do it. Number nine is get a mentor. Get a person who has walked these dusty trails or who can offer their words of wisdom or insight into wherever you're headed in life. I really do kind of admire those people who are just so far off the beaten path that they're kind of just walking in their own pace, not really with that sort of previous guidance because that's super scary to go around. No one has ever gone before, which I fully see myself doing within the near future and it's terrifying. But aside from that, find yourself a mentor, find yourself a person who's willing to help out. I was always taught every man for himself, you can't expect people to really help you. But I would think to myself, wow, as soon as I'm making it in life, I would just really want to go back to Chicago, help out young girls like myself, help out young people like myself. So there are people who felt that way growing up, like they didn't have a support network and so they wanted to give that back and look for those people who are willing to really reach out a hand to you because these people are the kind-hearted individuals who will really shape your future. Number 10, be honest with yourself. Parts of imposter syndrome are just irrational. You can handle it, you can do so many things. Yet at the same time, it's important to be honest with yourself and to be okay with that. One of the mistakes that I would always make when I would go to my interviews initially was that I would say things like, I know these, um, I know Python, I know Java, I know all of these different systems and we talked about all these different things, I know them. My mentor told me once that she just tries to focus on, she has experience in things and she's dabbled in here and she has, she's willing to learn because you have like when you're just when you say you know you like you're 100 percent able that anxiety can show if you don't fully believe in yourself if you don't fully believe that you're 100 percent well versed in something and especially when you're like a student a sophomore it's just unrealistic to think that you've gotten that far when it comes to your knowledge and there's nothing wrong with that there really is nothing wrong with that i just personally find it more effective to be honest you don't have to be superwoman, you don't have to be superman to be out here making amazing things happen. You're already that person inside. So, and the best part about 
the best part about our achievements is that we do it while we're fully human while we have flaws while we may not be completely confident in ourselves there's 57 year old complete business moguls who are unsure it's okay it's a part of life y'all so this was my video on dealing with imposter syndrome really hope it was helpful to the people watching and you know i'm probably gonna make more videos about my college journey and how i deal with everything so just stay tuned and i love you all have a good one bye <laughs>